Hi, we're the Lins, and I'm Jerry. And I'm Kelly. And this is Reach Out with the Lins as we go through the Bible. And we encourage you to join us as we look today at Psalm 138. David uh, seems to be the author of this, and it's about the Lord's goodness to the faithful. And are we faithful? Oh, God is, and his goodness is always available to us. Uh, perhaps you'd like to get your Bible and open it up to Psalm 138. Maybe grab a cup of coffee and just relax with us. And I'm going to ask for Kelly to open us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this ability to be able to come and read your word. We ask, Lord, now that everything we do and say would glorify you. We pray, Lord, that the word of God would accomplish the purpose for each person that you wanted to accomplish this day. We ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Psalm 138. David has vowed to praise the Lord for his loyal or covenant love. And of course, that love that we have is a covenant love. When I married Kelly back in uh, 2014, not that long ago, uh, we had a marriage contract. It was out of love, but it was also a contract before God, before witnesses, and uh, it was not just a matter of feelings, but it was a loyal love by contract. And God's love toward us is also a loyal love by the contract written in the blood of Jesus Christ, who was sacrificed for our sins. And so God is going to uh, shower that loyal love on us through Jesus. David did not know that uh, when he wrote about a thousand years before Christ. But uh, that love is real, it's strong, and it has goodness that applies to every area of our lives. David's grateful that prayers were answered, and you and I can be grateful as well. We're going to be looking at the verses 1 through 3 uh, as David gives his psalm, uh, his, his praise, and Kelly's going to read those first three verses, then we're going to talk about it. I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing to you. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above your name. In the day when I cried out, you answered me. You made me bold with strength in my soul. So let's talk about that. I will praise you with my whole heart. We like praise songs. We read the word of God. Uh, is it with our whole heart or just half-heartedly? I can say to Kelly, I love you. And she'll say, how far? To the moon and back. And that's, those are words, but the heart's not in it. If I say, honey, I love you to the moon and back, then she knows it's with my whole heart. Let's not get involved with a half-hearted worship with the Lord. Let's make it our whole heart. Amen? Amen. All right, so that's uh, praising God with a whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. What does that mean, before the gods? Before the gods of the world. could be the, before the kings of the world. Um, maybe when David was writing this, it was one day all kings will say that the true king will bow before. It could also be for me today, it's uh, the, before the gods, I will sing praises to you. Um, the things of the world, I sing praises to the Lord. I sing praises. I let people know how I feel about the Lord, how important he is to me. And um, I acknowledge him before the gods of the world. People have gods, and sometimes we don't put, our, we don't put the Lord first. Maybe it's a god of addiction. That's right. What's keeping us from wholeheartedly praising God? 
self, pride, work, money, somebody else, pastimes, pleasures. Those are the gods of the world. I'm going to praise the Lord before them. Negative qualities, I praise God before the world and before you. And negative qualities, you must die and praise for God must live. So praise God in the face of the addiction. You try to give up smoking, try to give up drinking, try to give up something else, then praise God. I think we need to replace, I call it replacement theology. Uh, instead of taking this cigarette, uh, I am going to instead replace it with praise for the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord ten times. An old friend of mine, Don Gossett, used to say that. So every time I want to smoke that cigarette, I'm going to praise God ten times, praising the Lord before the so-called God of nicotine or whatever it might be. Let's look at verse 2, honey. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above your name. I will worship toward your holy temple. Now in those days, the holy temple was where? In Jerusalem. And uh, Orthodox Jews to this day still turn toward Jerusalem. On my first trip to Israel, back in 1970. Uh, nine, I think it was. Uh, we were flying over on El Al, and I got up early, and the sun was just rising uh, on the horizon. And I saw some Orthodox Jews in their garb, and they were davening back and forth. They were facing the direction of Jerusalem, the place where they hope the temple one day will be restored. Well, Jesus, in the, the encounter with the woman at the well, talked about that place. And she said, you know, the Jews say it's in Jerusalem, and we Samaritans say it's here at Mount Gerizim. Uh, what do you say? And Jesus gave the words, as far as the temple, as far as the place of worship, they shall worship me where? In spirit and truth. In spirit and in truth. So we're going to face the Lord again with the whole heart. How do you face the temple? Wholeheartedly within worshiping the Lord. And I love this line. We talked about this the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, let's read the rest of verse 2. For you have magnified your word above all your name. Isn't that something? Magnified your word above all your name. He magnifies it more than his own name. Amen. Another translation says he gives full backing, full support. When you've got somebody's name behind it, you have the assurance, the strength, the resources of that. So God is saying, trust this word. Jesus said, my word will not return void. He puts his full faith and credit behind it. Verse 3, honey. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. Ever cry out to him and have him answer you? Mm -hmm. You cry out in weakness and he makes you strong. Amen. The Bible says that the righteous are... Bold as a lion. Bold as a lion. Picture that lion just strutting around king of the jungle. My and, old pastor taught me that Yeah. for my son. He said, his name means bold as a lion. He said, boy, he's sure bold. I said, yeah. He said, but don't take that in a bad way. He was like, two. Don't take that in a bad way. He could be bold as a lion. For the Lord, he's, he's bold as a lion for the Lord, for sure. Okay, so you be bold. Uh, don't be afraid. Don't quiver. Uh, you're, you're, you're shivering uh, that the landlord's going to ring your doorbell and evict you. You're shivering that your child who doesn't want to talk to you is never going to come back. Uh, you're shivering because uh, uh, of the diagnosis from the doctor about your physical well-being. Don't shiver. Be bold as a lion. Take the word to him. Mm -hmm. Take the word. Lord, you said in your word, and then you quote God's word. Amen. God's promises. And uh, we need to know his word. And you know, today it's very easy. Maybe you don't know a lot about the Bible, but just go on the internet. And uh, I have to say, with all my years of training, people say, Pastor, can you give me some verses about depression? I say, sure. And I type in scriptures on depression in the Google search engine. And I print them all out, send them to them, and it's easy. So just uh, get God's promises. He will put his full faith and credit. He'll put his name behind it. 
All right, that's the first section here. Uh, David is praising God. Now, he wants to praise God not only for himself, he wants all the kings. Kelly talked about this before, about the kings of the earth. He wants for them, in verses 4 and 5, to praise the Lord as well. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Yes, in verse 5. Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. That's what David is hoping for and expecting in the millennium. Yeah, it's going to be the millennium. It's not now, is it? No, most of the kings, most of the leaders in the different nations, we don't know their hearts. But judging from their testimony or lack of it, I don't think many of them really know the Lord in the person of Jesus Christ, certainly, as the way, the truth, and the life which Jesus proclaimed. So David's looking for that time when the kings of the earth are going to praise you. And Kelly's absolutely right. That's going to be in the millennium. That's going to be when he is king of kings and lord of lords. Uh, and Philippians tells us that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess You're that he's Lord. You're the ones who don't want to. That's right. They're going to confess it. And so uh, David says, I want everybody. Well, let's, let's take that in my life today, in your life. We've got a, a good-sized family, six kids three and a half grandkids. <laughs> We've got uh, another one coming in just a few months. And uh, extended family as well. Friends, people in church. Uh, let's replace the word kings with family, friends, acquaintances, co-workers. So how would that read now read if we put them in, in the place of kings? We want for them to praise God. We want for them to hear the words of your mouth, Lord, to sing of your ways. So let's put this into our daily request. Lord, I want to become an instrument for praise. Praise from my family, members at work, uh, in-laws, outlaws. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to be an instrument. So you've had to pray that, haven't you? That sometimes you felt you were in the early days, especially the only real believer that you knew of in the family, and you had to pray for God to use you. How, how did you handle that situation? <laughs> well, as Gilbert said, I was very confrontational. <laughs> well, Gilbert's her cousin, and uh, they were uh, the, the, the two lone rangers, apparently, in the family, right? Mm -hmm. So how, how did you guys get through that? I don't know. I always felt, he said it was, uh, it was defense. It was hard because people would laugh. And, um, and also, when they see you going through a lot of hardship, and um, maybe you've made a lot of mistakes, so you have hardship because of consequences. Sometimes um, it's because of your sin, it may be someone else's sin. It may not be anybody's sin, it may be just a situation. And um, people look at you and say, why did that happen? How, could you, how can you praise God through that? And, you know, those are the times where your faith is, is strong. And, and actually, God will give you even stronger faith through those times. Um, how did I do that? You just, you keep going. You keep going. And people laugh. And people make fun of you. And um, that's okay. But, um, I, you know, I rem I've looked back and I say, geez, I wish I went through it a little bit better. Because God is so faithful. It's, we're not really faithful. He is and uh, let's not forget prayer. Uh, if we in, uh, inject prayer in verse 4. Well, that's the biggest part. Yeah, um, I've got a uh, very close relative, very close, who refuses to hear about Jesus. She has said, I don't want to hear about the Lord. I don't want to hear about your faith. I don't want to hear about the church. Conversation closed now and always. Well, that's time for prayer. And so I'm going to pray, Lord, I pray for this person uh, to be able to praise you and for them, to that person to hear the words of your mouth. I want that person to sing of your ways, for great is the glory of the Lord. I want that person to know the glory. So turn it into a prayer. Uh, early on in my Christian walk, and I think for you too, we learned how to pray scripture. Take any verse and you can pray it. And that's how I would pray that. Um, not all the members of my family are praising you. Not all of them are hearing your voice or even want to. 
Lord, bring them to salvation through Jesus Christ. Pray those verses to become a reality. I want to see them around the throne of God with me and my wife. We want to have the whole family and friends. And that coworker, that ordinary person down the, the aisle there who is so miserable, I'm going to pray for that person to know you, to hear you, and to praise your name forever and ever. So turn that into a prayer. All right, now we look at... Um, uh, he says in um, verse 6, Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Ah, that, that's, uh, now we're talking about the deliverance of the Lord. The Lord is on high. He regards the lowly. Regards meaning he pays attention to the lowly. But the proud he knows from afar. He doesn't really know them. You know, and they, they don't know him. He distances himself. How do you feel about it? You've got somebody in your life who is lowly and humble and sweet and, and touchable. Uh, you've got another one who is touchy and proud and arrogant. How do you feel? How do you react? Uh, I think it's natural that we distance ourselves from the person who is proud and arrogant. Um, and so he's on high. And where does that pride come from, by the way? Do we know what the source of that pride is? The devil. Sure. Ezekiel talks about it. So does Isaiah. The devil wanted to be like God. I want to be just like the Most High. Set my throne on the farthest side of the north, the most prominent place. Um, there's a so-called God inside my heart, the old nature. I want to do this. I won't do that. I did it my way. And so there's a bit of that old temptation that the devil brought to Adam and Eve, said to Eve, you eat of this fruit of the tree and you'll be wise like God. And so she went ahead and ate of the fruit and got Adam to do the same. So um, they, they, were, they, they couldn't hear God. They, couldn't, they, were, they, they felt ashamed. They covered themselves. And uh, so if we have pride, we're not hearing God. It's as though he doesn't know us. Amen. Um, and so uh, we need to be dealing with that pride. How do you deal with pride? What, what do you do with it? Well, the Bible says to humble ourselves before the Lord and um, confess our sins. That'll help you get rid of that pride. Confession, and it is a good one. It really gets rid of pride because you have to humble yourself. Right. Now, we have somebody in our lives, perhaps, who needs correction. And we want to go in there with guns a-blazing and let them have it. But Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount talks about that. I think it's Matthew chapter 7. And what's he say? He doesn't say to ignore that person or let that person's sin pass. What does he say? We need to get the beam out of our own eye and then be able to see clearly to get that speck out of our brother's eye. So, as you say, confession. Get your nose in the carpet. Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I had trouble recently with somebody in the family and uh, this uh, person, I wanted an apology for conduct. And this person did not give me an apology. This person challenged me and said, you think I've done this? Well, you've also done wrong also. Well, I was initially upset about it. But then I realized that was the best gift that person could give me. I wanted the apology, you know, forgive me, Jerry. Yes, I forgive you. But to point out to me my own sin was very valuable. I had to say, Lord, forgive me. I'm also a sinner. I'm trying to throw stones in a glass house. And so that was the answer. I was free. I was free of my resentment of that person, and the relationship is fine to this day. That was the key that unlocked that. Yeah. Yeah, I had to get rid of my pride. I didn't realize the pride was there. I was judge. I was jury. And uh, that's not right. So let's look at verse 7. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. Yes. Though I walk in the midst of trouble. <laughs> Is that your life? <laughs> One of the promises that Jesus makes, I never, ever claim. Lord, you promised in this world mm -hmm. we'll have tribulation. Please give me tribulation today. I never pray that, no, nor do you. you. But we walk in the midst of trouble. It's all around us. If you want to avoid trouble, just keep your head underneath the covers. 
course, we have a couple You'll of dogs trouble. who sleep with us, and then they get under the covers, and we got trouble there. So You'll get trouble there, too. You get sick. You can't right. just stay in bed. That's right. Uh, so we walk in the midst of trouble. Let's be candid. That's part of life. Uh, but here's the promise. You will revive me. Ah, that's the promise. Lord, revive me. Uh, I'm tired. I'm weak. I'm poor. I'm miserable. I'm discouraged. I'm depressed. Revive me. Pray it out. Ask Amen. God to do it. And then you do your part. You're asking God to revive you. What do we do on our part to be revived? We cry out to the Lord. We pray. We spend time with him. We turn from our sin. Um, I like to use the, um, when I'm really tired, and then he revives me when I spend time with him. Also, prayer. Um, I, I like our Tuesday nights because we get together and we have quite a few, and we all pray together, and people pray over each other. That helps, makes a big difference. I've been, I've been doing this for many years now, and I notice if I miss that Tuesday, I really miss that. The prayer, praying for each other. Um, he revives us. I think of when I go to the gym, and I don't want to do it, and I start walking, and I'm tired, and I'm hurting, and I just don't want to do it because I'm lazy, and I have some back issue, and it's, I'm stiff, and all of a sudden, I begin to feel revived from the exercise. That's kind of how what God does to us. He revives us. We just have to, to get in there, just like with working out, get in there and do it, and then all of a sudden, we get revived. We feel that feeling. Yes. So prayer and praise and the Word, getting into God's Word, that's your food, that's your nourishment. Uh, when you uh, are weak, you need to eat, and this is the food that we eat, uh, the milk and the meat of God's Word. Amen. Uh, and then getting out with other Christians and helping them and, and non-Christians. Serving. Minister, serving. Yeah. Well, when you get your When you get it off yourself mm -hmm. and you spend time serving someone else, all of a sudden you're feeling a lot feeling That's right. different. Talk to your pastor and say, on the next hospital visit, take me along. I'm feeling very self-focused, self-centered, having a pity party. Let's go into the hospital and get our eyes on Jesus. Volunteer. And said somebody else, volunteer in some way. Serve. You get to get beyond ourselves. Homeless it's not all shelter. About us. Yeah, homeless shelter. Absolutely. Uh, and then the final verse here about the Lord's deliverance, verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. Oh, I love that verse 8. The Lord will perfect, he will complete that which concerns me. Paul wrote to the Philippian church, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it unto the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. We've come out of the, uh, we're into the winter season now here in Albany, but we uh, got through the uh, spring, summer, and fall with a lot of road construction. And what a mess, and delays, and this and that. But it was for a time and a season, and we had to realize it would not be like this forever. Uh, they would complete the job. And for the most part, and uh, with timing being what it was, they did complete it. Uh, I'm under construction, I'm not perfect. And so we wanna walk around sometimes with our hard hat and say, you know, don't judge me, I'm under construction. Um, we're going through difficult times. He will perfect that which concerns me. I'm not all that I'd like to be. The fruit of the Spirit, which is the picture of Jesus, the love, the joy, the peace, etc. It's not always coming forth in my life. How about yours? Mm -mm. So what do we do? We say, Lord, I'm under construction. You are working on it. Uh, it's like a painting that has not been completed. Uh, the artist has in his mind what it's going to look like, but Amen. not all the paint's on the canvas. So uh, God's going to perfect it. Uh, if you're in Christ and you've given your heart to him, you're saved, and now he's working to bring forth within you uh, the perfect life that he has for you. It's going to take time, and you'll be perfected once you get to heaven. Meanwhile, sanctification's going on. Let him do his work, and let's not judge each other, and let's not even judge ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for the progress that's been made. Pour on the praise. Amen. Yeah, 
I lose my temper, but not as much as I did last week. Or I'm pigging out with that chocolate cake at three in the morning, but I'm only having five slices instead of seven slices. Uh, I'm trying to give up cigarettes, and you know I'm down to five cigarettes, but last year this time I was smoking a whole pack. You get the idea. Uh, just thank him for what's going on and pour on the praise. Um, oh, his mercy, look at that. It's, it's enduring forever. And it, he says, don't forsake the work of your hands. And God won't. You are the work of his hands. And so how do we forsake each other? We can't. Uh, we've got to have a lot of compassion here. So as we look at Psalm 138, we see God's goodness toward the faithful. And Amen. the faithful are those who are with him through Christ. Amen. And so uh, we're going to have a sinner's prayer. We're going to have Kelly lead us in a sinner's prayer. You know, the Bible tells us that if we want to get to heaven, there's one way. Jesus said, I am what? The way, the truth, and the light. I'm the way, and I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And you're going to have that through Jesus Christ. He says also, you know, I stand at the door of mm -hmm. your heart and I knock. Romans ten nine. If you will, um, I said that was Revelation three. If you'll stand at the door and knock, so he's knocking on your door right now, and uh, we want to ask Kelly to uh, lead us in a prayer to open the door of our hearts to him right now. Just bow your heart, whatever you're doing, and agree with us in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this wonderful time of hearing your word. Father, we lift up to you everyone here. We ask that you would bless them. And those that are uh, listening and watching, we ask, Lord, that you would just be with them right now. And Father, I just ask that for those who want to come to know you today and make you the Lord and Savior, that they would call out to you. And so we lift them up to you, and we ask that you work in their hearts right now and turn their hearts to you. Now, as I say this prayer, please repeat with me. Dear Lord, I am a sinner. I'm sorry that I have sinned. I ask that you would forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart and become Lord of my life. I want for you to live your life in me. And I want to serve you all the days of my life. Please take over my life now as I accept you as Lord and Savior. Thank you for becoming Lord of my life. And also, I'd like to pray for those who um, need prayer for healing. We ask, Lord, that you would touch and heal your people. For anyone right now who needs a touch of the Lord, we ask that you would touch and heal them. For your word says you have Come into this day, Lord, to be healed. And we pray right now that the goodness of the Lord would be upon everyone listening, that we will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Your word is true, Lord, and we praise you for it. And We thank you for your healing right now. Thank you, Jesus. By your stripes, we are healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with us, welcome to the family of God. Find a church in your area that's faithfully teaching his word, and they'll be good to you and, and help you, and you help them as well. Be in God's word daily, praise, and listen to some good praise music. Uh, if you have any questions or we can help you here at Reach Out, you let us know. We'll be praying for you. Please pray for us as well. God bless you, and thanks for spending this time with us. We love you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. By this moment, your needs to supply, reach out.